we can now continue uh, from ecology uh, to agricultural topics or precision agriculture. And uh, Tambet Kikos, Ain Kull and Maris Kruse uh, and the presenter will be Maris. The floor is yours. Yeah, hello. Can you hear me? And yes, can you see um, my slides? Yes, exactly. These are visible. Great, thanks. Uh, so, hello, everyone. My name is Maris Kruse, and I am from Estonian Agricultural Research Center. Uh, first, I would like to say that I'm very glad to take part of this event. Thank you for inviting. And it has been a very nice day, full of interesting topics and ideas. And I will talk about how satellites can help develop precision farming and what are the expectations of farmers and agricultural institutions, like, uh, for example, Agricultural Research Center. Uh, so actually, this presentation was prepared by my colleagues from ARC and University of Tartu, Tampet Kikas and Ain Kull, uh, but they unfortunately were not able to join us today. Uh, so Agricultural Research Centre is uh, under the Estonian Ministry of Rural Affairs. And we have uh, different laboratories. We have three uh, field testing centers in different parts of Estonia. And we have departments which are dealing with agri-environmental monitoring and analysis of rural economy and rural networking. And soil monitoring and research bureau where uh, Tambet and uh, Ain are working is responsible uh, for different agri-ecological studies. Uh, for example, like the usage of fertilizers or plant nutrients balance, uh, fertility and soil maintenance, and conducting studies on yield and quality of agricultural crops, and managing also different thematic databases. And Department of Geography uh, at University of Tartu, where Rhein is working is a leading academic institution in climatology, landscape ecology and geoinformatics. And they carry out research in very different fields. So a few words about precision farming. As we know, fields are not homogeneous, but they consist of very different parts. Uh, where, for example, uh, soil properties, water regime, light conditions, and microclimate uh, can vary significantly. And in uh, precision farming, farmer uh, can take into account all those differences. And when practicing precision farming, farmer can uh, increase agricultural productivity and reduce costs increase yield quality, reduce the use of fertilizers, pesticides or fungicides and fuel also, and make agriculture more environment, environment friendly. And this all together makes agriculture more sustainable, both for economic, economical and uh, environmental point of view. Well, sure. But what gaps can uh, satellites fill uh, for farmer, farmers? For example, uh, information about field, field status, like waterlogged depressions on fields, flood extent and duration of floodplains, soil water content, soil temperature, optimization of soil cultivation or sowing or fertilization, crop damage mitigation and crop conditions like hardening or winter survival of winter crops, a drought damage, plant development, potential yield prediction or overgrazing. Like here in this image, um, that is uh, orthophoto by Estonian land board. It's in springtime. And it seems uh, 
it is seen uh, like most of the field looks okay, but here is part that is underwater. As a regular high resolution spatial definition of seasonal flood and storm water inundating inundated agricultural lands to assess status and efficiency of drainage systems. Uh, Sentinel-1 SAR data is uh, insensitive to clouds and internal illumination. And so when it's combined with Sentinel-2 optical data, it, it can improve spatial resolution. Um, and here also on the left, uh, this is autophoto, not, of course, uh, not Sentinel image. And also, uh, again, we can see the flooded area here. Um, also very important is soil water content, soil temperature, which farmers need to optimize soil cultivation, sowing and crop management. And there is direct method uh, for soil water content measure by use of SAR data, but uh, this lacks uh, of resolution that is highly needed. And there is indirect method by use of indexes uh, based on multi-spectral images, uh, like normalized difference uh, water index in DWY. And uh, it's also clear that use of uh, this um, shortwave infrared spectral length is more efficient than use of green spectral length. Mm. Here is uh, see, uh, seen two examples. Like it's a cornfield on the left. Uh, how different images or like indexes uh, are reflecting quite a similar situation, or I mean they they reflect it similarly. But uh, the other example, where is winter wheat? We can see that uh, different on different images, like different um, indexes are uh, reflecting uh, the situation uh, differently. Uh, so we can say that single indicator is uh, for sure not sufficient. We need several indicators, especially for uh, different crops. And also timing. Here is seen uh, seasonal dynamics of NDVI at uh, Viljandi experimental fields, like in the, yeah, in the beginning of June, in the middle of June. And this red, uh, this is uh, all cloudy area. Uh, in the beginning of uh, July, with less clouds, and uh, in the middle of October, and here is seen like a Sentinel-2 image uh, resolution is uh, sufficient, uh, but clouds uh, affect a lot of results. Mm. And here in October uh, image, we can see that uh, there are still some green fields, like this one in the middle. Uh, this is a short term crossland with legume mixtures. And uh, like here, here, here are test fields with perennial grass mixtures. That's why these areas are still green. Uh, so as I said before, more efficient cloud masking is required because clouds have so strong if effect on any time series of indexes derived from optical satellite data. 
and if clouds are masked out, uh, the fringe, uh, the fringe may still be affected, and the index value in time series may be inaccurate. Uh, here is an ex ex example uh, from 2019 from one uh, particular field. Uh, like we can see that in April, uh, there were only um, uh, six uh, and half uh, good images from uh, Sentinel-2. And uh, for example, uh, in July, only four good images, and in August, uh, two. And uh, it's very important very important uh, to improve this because, for example, August is very critical period. This is ripening and harvesting period, and farmers need um, like more uh, good quality images more often. Uh, here is seasonal dynamics of NDVI for winter wheat and its relationship with yield. Uh, this uh, blue line uh, indicates uh, indicates um, wheat with a higher higher yield, and the orange orange one with lower. So we can see here in spring, in the beginning of April, that they are quite on the same level. It means that the winter survival uh, was similar. Uh, but in April and May, already uh, as a field with a higher yield, the NDVI of it was also uh, strongly higher. Uh, here in uh, June and July, it's they are again like on the same level. Uh, here in the end of July and uh, the beginning of August, we can see the ripening and harvesting period. And in September again, like uh, new new crop is growing. Yeah, here. Yeah. Um, NDVI is very widely used, uh, but its sensitivity is not always sufficient. Mm, and uh, kernel NDVI or K NDVI has higher sensitivity. Uh, so if you want to see a change uh, better in some certain range, we can use K and DVI to see the change in more detail. Um, and who is more interested in this? A new research art article has published this year, and it is open access, so you can uh, find out more about it. So for conclusion, like what is specific for agricultural sector is a need for frequent images because the changes in crop development are really fast, especially in critical stages. And the intervention should be really quick. Uh, for example, applying fertilizers and pesticides, fungicides. Missing images due to long image interval or missing images due to cloud cover can be costly for farmers uh, when the needed actions uh, might be delayed. And as we know, fields in Estonia are small and often uh, they are with irregular shape and long ages, and fields have a high soil heterogeneity. And that's why high image resolution is required um, uh, because low spatial resolution offsets uh, like the whole benefits of the precision farming. 
like here also is seen in this image. I think this distance is like 150 meters, and this distance is maybe around 300 meters. And uh, we can see the relative yield in this hilly field, and it's really heterogeneous. Even well, it's not very large field. It's rather small. Yes, and thank you. This was all by me.